A podcast about former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick is giving new life to theories about an unsolved murder. Seven investigator Heather Catalo joins us now with a look at how the Crime Town podcast is putting a spotlight on the Tamara Green case again, Heather. Well, the producers of the Crime Town podcast have been in Detroit on and off for months telling the fascinating story of former Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick. They've even been interviewing Kilpatrick by phone from federal prison. In the latest episode that was just released, Crime Town zeroes in on the Tamara Green case. Then after this young lady got killed, the news was chasing me down, calling me a murderer. From his federal prison cell, Kwame Kilpatrick is telling all to the producers of the Crime Town podcast. From his rise as Detroit's youngest mayor to his downfall with the text message scandal and federal racketeering trial, Crime Town is reliving it all. There's no, there's no, there, there was no party. Absolutely was no part. In their most recent podcast, Crime Town's producers tackled the Tamara Green murder case. A lawsuit against the city of Detroit alleged that Green was killed because she had danced for Kilpatrick at a Manoogian Mansion party. Here's retired Detroit EMS Lieutenant Michael Kearns. Both her eye was swollen. She had been crying. She was physically upset. And did she tell you her name? Tammy Green. Crime Town explores the claims of missing emails, vanishing evidence, and theories that a cop killed Green. But they also interview retired Detroit police detective Mike Carlisle about those allegations. He says most of them were just rumors. They were completely false. If the mayor was involved, I'd gladly have put a pair of handcuffs on that man for what he did to the city of Detroit, but he wasn't. Later this month, Crime Town will dive into the six-month federal trial that ultimately put Kilpatrick in prison for 28 years. Here's a preview of what Kilpatrick had to say about his guilty verdict. After the guilty verdict, I'm watching the news, and it was people dancing and, and happy, and we finally got them. Like people, there was people dead in the streets, and I've never seen that kind of viciousness from my city from the people that I call my neighbors and my community people, my, my, my countrymen. And it was terribly depressing to me. I, I, uh, I went into a depression that uh, I didn't know that I could have. WXYZ has provided Crime Town with a lot of archival footage from our extensive coverage over the years, so you will hear a lot of familiar voices in the podcast. You can listen to Crime Town on Spotify. Alan and Glenda. All right, Heather, but the Crime Town producers interviewed you as well, and what was that like? Well, it's been fascinating. They're very thorough. It was an interview that stretched over about four hours. They've been talking to dozens of people involved in the Kilpatrick era, reporters who covered him, family members, friends, even former police chiefs. It's an interesting look back at a very controversial time in our history, as we all remember. Memorable. One we'll never forget. Heather, thank you so much. You're welcome.